Welcome to the Isto James channel. I'm Isto James, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to paint some glowing butterflies in a jar. So grab your paint sets and let's go. All right, let's talk about supplies before we jump in. In front of me, I have a 16 by 20 black canvas. I bought it this way and you can too online or any craft store. If you don't have a black canvas, that's okay. You can actually use a black gesso and paint it black or even use black acrylic paint. Just make sure that once you apply it, that it's dry before we start. Now let's talk about the paints you're gonna need as well. I'm just using level one. It does not matter which brand you use. Anything that you get in a paint kit or just anything starter will work for you. Just make sure you have some of these colors. We definitely need white. White's a given, that's gonna be the main thing that we use. Now you're gonna have a turquoise. You're gonna have a phalo blue, a phalo green, and a yellow. Again, any variations of these main colors will work. Just pick what works for you. Now the stuff we put our paint on is a palette. I personally prefer to use the plastic ones because they usually come with cover. They usually come with covers and it keeps your paint from drying out. But a good old fail safe is just use a paper plate. It's very easy and once you're done, you can just throw it away. We're also gonna use some paint brushes. I like to use just a small flat brush. If you like angles, that's cool. If not, hey, again, what works for you? Just this is gonna be our main brush to work with. Make sure it's flat and it has kind of a line to work with. We also have a round detail brush for, well, exactly what it is in the title of the name there. It's for details. And then we have a piece of chalk. This is my favorite thing to use in paintings a lot because it allows you to erase and start over again. This one is going to be crucial for this painting. It will help you out, so please have some chalk. If you don't have it, you can get by, but it'll make it much easier for you if you do. Uh, also a glass of water and a little towel or paper towel on the side so you can clean your brushes as you go. And then of course, I like to use a big towel to lay down over my surface here to just protect my working space. So that's all you're gonna need to get into it and let's jump in. All right, so as we jump in, the first thing I wanna do is take my chalk. I'm gonna take this chalk and find a horizon line. What I mean by that is if we're doing scenery or anything like that, there should be a horizon that separates our ground and our sky. So easily said, I'm just gonna take this piece of chalk and about two thirds of the way down, I'm gonna create a horizontal line that will set up where our grass sits. Now at the bottom, I'm going to do a oval shape, a hot dog. This is gonna be the bottom of our jar. So what I'm doing in here is just setting how wide this jar is gonna be, how long. Now one trick that I'm not gonna do here, but could help you is I put a, you can put a straight line up from the center of that oval to find out how tall you want your jar to be. And at the top of that oval, you'll just do another oval, the exact same shape and size. Think of it as a fat hot dog or a Twinkie, something like that. That's kind of what we're shooting for here. And this is what's so great about using chalk is I grab my paper towel here. I dip just a little bit of water in there and I can erase any mistakes that I do. That's what's so beautiful about using chalk. I love it. I decided I want my lines to be a little bit taller here. So as I do that, I realized, all right, we've got to get our jar or at least the top part of our jar here. And all I'm doing is creating another oval to overlap it about, you know, a thumbs width up above that. And I connected the two ends with a straight line. Simple, now I'm just going back and forth, kind of creating my shape with the chalk here. You don't have to get it exactly right the first time you do it. That's what's so great about it. And I'm just using the sides here just to create my edge. I'm gonna just go back and forth a little bit until I get a bulge or some kind of like a bell jar shape that I want. So initially, no, this isn't what I want. So I'll grab my paper towel with a little bit of water on it and I'll wipe away the corners. And I'm looking at this and to me, it doesn't look balanced. And most artists or anybody who uses technique will know that you're gonna have to re redraw a few lines. So as I do this, we have the top of our jar and we go through and I'm just trying to find the right shape. 
So go ahead and add extra lines or takeaway lines. Just do whatever you can to get a shape that you're happy with and comfortable with. Once you find that shape, then we can go in there and create the, the permanent paint markers there. So <laughs> this chalk is just construction lines for you to help you shape it. You got it, that easy. Now, ooh, that's a good one. See, I think once, I, I think I'll have it curve out a little bit more at the top and then have a longer journey to the bottom until it connects that bottom piece. And it almost kind of looks like a vase or vase. Um, I'm happy with that now. So let's move on to the butterflies. Now with the butterflies, I'm gonna do the line. So we'll just start with the head, just a simple circle, and I'll do a line to simulate how far I want that butterfly or how long I want its body to be. And then we'll just connect, just like how we did with our jar just now, we'll just connect a kind of a little bell curve line here. And then we create some rings. With this butterfly, you could really do any shape that you want. Um, I looked at a couple of pictures of butterflies and uh, I just thought I would just wing it and kind of create my own. So when I do this reverse side of its wing, I'm kind of try trying to mimic it perfectly, make it a mirrored image of the other wing. Now when we do these other butterflies though, I'm gonna change it a little bit just so you can show you. If you're not comfortable with it, please make all the butterflies' wings the exact same. It's gonna look great. But I'm gonna change the perspective here. So with this one, it'll be the same shaped wing, but I'm gonna get it as if we have a different view. So it's gonna be skinnier on this right side and then much longer on this left side. So what that's gonna do is make it look like it's kind of turning towards us just a little skewed a little bit, just to get some 3D dimensions in there. Let's have fun, let's do it with this one too, only I'll do it on the left side. So I still just do the normal body, do the head first, do the body. So I'll do the normal wing on the right side this time. There we go, and then this one, maybe it's flapping right at our faces, so it would, you'd almost not even be able to see it. So I'm gonna make it really skinny, but it's gonna have the same length as far as how tall up or how far up it goes from its head and how far down it'll go. It'll have the same same length, it'll just be skinnier. So that just creates a little bit of three dimensions, I think. I really like that effect. But if you're painting along with me, just know that you could do whatever you want. Make the wings the same, make them play with, play with perception and make them in the shape that you think looks good. There's no right or wrong here. Then we'll have one captured in here too. The trick here is I don't want it to look like this butterfly it has its full wings open. Maybe it's just still sitting there thinking about leaving the jar. So his wings, he's gonna have two sets of wings going to the left. So I just make one a little bit longer. There's really no right or wrong here either. You can go back and forth. Now, after a little bit of cleanup, make sure that your, all your chalk looks the way it want, your, the way that you want it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill in white first. Now this is a painting that's going to be super easy and simple, but we gotta do some things to make it work in our favor. And to get these things to look like they're glowing in the middle of the night or nighttime and having these Firefly, butterflies, glowing and illuminating. We need to lay down a primer set. And with this, I'm just gonna go over all the white chalk that we just laid down. I'm gonna cover all of it with white paint now. And since we're working with a black canvas, we are going to make sure that these colors pop out. So this is a primer layer, just laying it all with white. If we use chalk first, you don't have to do all of this on the first step. At least we know we have the shapes that we want to use. We have our constructions li construction lines laid down. We are good to go. And this jar is going to glow a little bit. Um, there's going to be some grass or alongside the jar that will glow from being lit up. But none of that will be possible if we don't lay down this white primer layer first. If you were to just go in and automatically start painting colors, you almost wouldn't even see it. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna show you what I mean by that when I lay down this grass. I 
And now with the butterflies, I'm going to fill them in entirely. You can use one of the smaller brushes for this part if you can in there. I'm just using the, the corner of my brush here to fill in the head. It is easy for me. If it is not easy for you, don't worry. Change out your brushes. That's okay, you can definitely do that. And as I do this, I'm gonna fill in every part of the butterfly white. And I'm gonna come back and do its wings here in a moment. But I want you guys to see the form here of how we did this. And we can see the butterfly and its body. We will do antennas on it as well, but I'm gonna wait till the end of the painting to do that. We're not gonna do it right here just yet, and I have a reason for that. So everything we're painting in with the chalk is all just white. And I'm gonna fill these in, and I'm gonna wait for you to do it, and then I'll give you some more instruction in a moment. Everything you did with chalk should be close to covered up when we're done with this step. I hope you found it much easier though to do it this way with chalk than to just go in straight away with paint.
Now when we add the, the white to this butterfly, I'm gonna leave a little gap between the wings so we can tell that there's difference between one and two sets of wings. If you only did one set, that's totally okay as well. This might not even be fundamentally correct, but at least it gives off the illusion that there's two pairs of wings facing towards the left here. So I will leave a little bit of a gap here and that'll help me when I come back to add some color in a moment. That'll be the next step. I'm gonna take this time to remind you guys that we are doing this on a video. So at any point, please pause it, fast forward, rewind if you need to as fit. You do not need to keep pace with what I'm doing. Please go at your own pace and uh, pause and rewind as you need. There's also a bar below, as you see, that's slowly counting down or going away. That's gonna be your time bar until we cover the next step. So I hope that helps you as you're pinning along so you know where we're at. And in the next step, once we get this white down, we're gonna do some color. Now I am doing some grass here as well. I'm not going to do all the grass. I'm just primering the same as the butterflies. These are gonna be the sides of the grass that glow, that, that the, the butterfly wings have illuminated in some form. So the closer they get to the jar, the brighter those colors are gonna be. They'll make more sense once we add these colors here. But do a couple blades of grass next to the jar, besides the jar, and just a little bit away. This will help once we lay some color down. It'll really have this really cool effect and you're gonna see here in a moment. <clears throat> Okay, so let's fill this in with the main colors. I'm going to take some of my phalo blue, and as I do this, I'm gonna start filling this in, filling these butterflies in. Um, depending on what when you've started this step, this should mix in a little bit with that white layer that you laid down. If so, that is totally okay. But you're gonna notice, even if you go out of the lines here, and you have some of that blue go over the white, the part where the white is will shine and just stand out and the part on the black will not at all. So you can kind of almost be a little bit lazy here and paint outside the lines. I wouldn't go too far out, but if you do just a little bit, it'll kind of help create a glowing effect, like the colors actually radiating off, radiating off of the, these butterfly wings. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill just the edges first to make sure that's all covered. And then I'm gonna pull that paint in from the edge closer and closer inside the wing. Now don't worry about coloring anything yet or making anything glow. What we wanna do right now is just make sure all this blue is in here. And that if you have that white down, you can definitely see this blue as opposed to black. So again, I'm gonna go around the edges of the butterfly first. You can be a little sloppy, like I said, but as we do that, then pull the color into the wing, just so we're gonna have some transparency effect. So, Cause get these butterflies to actually glow. If you look at anything illuminating or glowing, it's very bright and white, the closer to the heat source or the light source that happens. And that's what we're gonna emulate here as well, as if the butterfly, like the energy source is coming from the body itself. And as you can see, I can get really lazy with this. And only the parts with the white will show the blue. So it's kind of getting the painting to work for you. Now we are gonna come back, sorry I interrupted myself there for a minute, but we are gonna come back and add a little bit of white to this later and mix that. For now, we just wanna make sure we get our first layer of blue down. Same principle every time. I'm gonna go around the edge, fill this in. As you do this too, if like you get to this point where I am on this third butterfly, if this paint goes over the chalk, it's gonna erase that chalk. So you don't have to do much to worry about that chalk either. We're gonna cover up a lot of this.
So I'm gonna rephrase at this point. We're not worrying about white or making it glow yet. We just wanna make sure that these butterflies are blue. Uh, if you don't get exactly the center of the, the wing like I did, that's okay. We will come back with white, but Overall, I'd say it's probably just good practice to color these whole things in the one base color that you're doing first. And I hope at this point you are just feeling relaxed, you're chilling out. This is the whole point of painting, at least for me, it helps me to relax and forget about stuff. I'm worrying about details on my painting. I'm not really worrying about the details of my life right now. So I hope some of you are experiencing that if you are painting along with me. If, if not, I hope you're at least enjoying the video. All right, now I'm gonna play a little bit with this white. Since our blue's down, it should still be just slightly wet. And we're gonna go through and just apply some of this white. It should be mixing with the blue as we lay it down. If it's not, that's okay. Uh, I just wanna get this white laid down. It should be mixing with your blue as long as you did it right away. Uh, and this is slowly gonna start the effect of glowing. It's not gonna be our final step, but it's going to start it. And when I do this, I wanna make sure I definitely get down this center part of the butterfly's body. I wanna get inside the head and I wanna get the part of the wings that it's closest to the body to be the most white. This is gonna create our glowing effect. Now once it dries, we can always come back and apply more white. The goal here is just to kind of have it mix just very generally with this blue we laid down. And it should kind of have this hazy effect from the two colors mixing together. And you should end up with a lighter blue. Now I know for a fact I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna mess with these just a little bit until they get, I get them to where I want them. But you can do the same with your painting, is just add the white, try to make it mix with the blue a little bit. If it doesn't mix right out of the gate, you can always just add like a tiny dip of water to your paintbrush to try to thin out the paint. Or you could just add a little bit more blue if it's already dried out and just try to get this white to look a lighter blue. Our end goal here is to create a gradient to where the edge of the wing is darker blue and the closer we get to the body, it gets lighter and lighter and lighter, almost like it's just getting hotter and hotter and that's how we're gonna get that glowing effect. So what I'm doing is now just adding just a little bit more blue to try to mix this uh, and, and make that goal of ours is to get this nice gradient, dark, dark blue kind of edges and, and kind of fuzzy looking almost. Getting closer and closer to the body it becomes more and more white. Any version of that, you're gonna be successful here. It might not look exactly like mine and I really hope it doesn't. That's the beauty of this is everybody's got their own style or own, way of doing this, but you definitely want to have a gradient. You don't want these hard lines where it's just dark blue and all, all of a sudden jumps straight into white and that's it. Uh, I take that back. That would be fine actually. You're just, for me personally, I think it's got a cooler effect if it, if it has a transition. Um, but really up to you. This is your painting, so do what you want with it. Uh, Taking just some more of this blue around the edges just to try to emphasize that, that glowing effect. I feel like that just works the best for me. I'll do some of the edges of the body as well, maybe some of the edges of the head. But right now, this gradient's starting to look really good in my eyes. So I'm gonna keep messing with these butterflies and, and doing the same thing. I feel fortunate we're doing a few butterflies because I can practice and get better at this for each each time I do a new butterfly. 
So I will go back and forth quite a bit and you're allowed to do that as well. Please enjoy and uh, we'll get back to you in a moment. Here we go, as I'm working on this third butterfly as well, I'm realizing that both of these colors have kind of dried up, at least the initial blue that I did. So I just added just a tiny bit of water to the tip of my brush and that helped mix these colors just a little bit. There's a good rule of thumb, if the paint is not mixing, you're missing one of two things, either water or a little bit more paint. So use your best judgment, find out what's happening. If you think you've got a lot of paint on there and you're just having trouble getting the colors to blend, add a tiny bit of water. Uh, if that's not the case and it looks really thin, then please add a little more paint. Um, you can go back and forth with both of these colors until you get a gradient that you like. jumping in with a little bit of this aqua color. A turquoise would work really good. If you have like a phalo green, mix it with white. But this turquoise color now, I'm just adding this for another layer of depth. Um, I almost think that if these butterflies weren't glowing, maybe they'd be blue and green. And at nighttime, what I'm seeing is the green and blue being illuminated. So this is kind of an extra credit step. You don't necessarily need to add the turquoise, but I think it was a nice, I think it was a nice addition to getting these to, to look a little bit more like they're glowing. And again, as you can see, I'm doing the same technique though. It is mixing with that white I laid down and now it's kind of getting a little bit hazy. This one I needed to add just a little bit more green. And now to me, these really look like they're glowing. We are gonna clean these up a little bit later with a final layer of white. Right now, I wanna make sure that these, these main colors are laid down really nice. And then we will come back with a final layer of light white once these dry, and that will really make them look like they're glowing. But for now, let's get some wing shapes in here. Let's get some, you can even paint in some patterns. I don't feel like I would see patterns on the butterfly at night, but Hey, it's a painting, do whatever you want with it, right? I'm gonna keep it simple just for this demonstration though for now. I'm gonna add another little layer of green in here between the edges. Same goal, get it to blur and then these the outside edges should still definitely be blue though as if that's where all the light ends and we don't get any more light off these wings. So play with it, have fun with it. I'm just taking some of that blue to make sure, hey, there's that, that end edge. Just as I was telling you, these edges of these wings should still be blue. And oh 
boy, I can already tell this is gonna be a battle. I'm gonna go back and forth and just continue to work on this gradient. Uh, I suffer sometimes from overworking some of these paintings, but I figure, hey, it's my painting, I can do what I want with it, so I will give you all the same advice. It's your painting, do what you want with it. Get it to a point where you're comfortable with it and you're happy. If you feel you're overworking it, maybe take a break, step away for a minute, let your mind just get a few minutes of rest and then try to go back in and it probably won't be as hard as you think before. Here's a good example too, the butterfly in the jar. If I didn't create more of a gradient here, you can see what I'm talking about. It looks like hard lines against hard lines. All we're doing is softening those up. And as I do that, it already looks better in my mind's eye. Now let's just do some final white. All this is is just pure white. And I'm even gonna attempt to throw a little bit of butterfly shape pattern in here. We'll see if it sticks or not. But as I use this pure white, it's already mixing with this paint I did. So I'm not gonna go too far, but I wanna make every brush stroke I do comes from closer to the body. And then I pull it out away into the wings. So we're just lighting up the center here of the wings. We're just lightening them up seeing if I can throw maybe a soft little butterfly wing pattern in here. Yeah, I look like extra lines. This looks kind of cool. So, the goal here now is we want to get lighter and lighter and lighter. We will come back, like I said, with that final step of white once it's dry. But I'm just mixing this gradient, trying to make it look really Decent. All right, this third butterfly needs some work. Let's get into it.
Okay, I'm gonna just test inside here with that just pure white. This may not be dry all the way yet, but if I do this right, it should be mostly dry. It'll mix a little bit with the underlayer. But this is how we achieve our glowing. If you find that this, if you're in the working on the middle of the body here and it's still just mixing with the paint, you might want to give it a few more minutes, but at this step, what we're trying to accomplish is having just pure white color coming through. And this is how we show that it has this intense glowing effect. So we don't want to cover all the wings. We just spent a lot of time doing a really good job on those wings to make them look like they're a glowing color. So we don't want to go too far into this. We just want to get like the center of the head, the middle of the, the butterfly's body here, and then just kind of the center parts of the wings as if that's where all the energy is flowing and coming from. And as long as it doesn't mix with your paints below, you should be in good shape and we're almost done with these. Butterflies at least. kind of playing with a, around with a pattern still. That's probably a no-no at this step of the painting. You should probably should have established that with color. It just, it stuck out to me, so I thought I'd try. <laughs> I, uh, I, I shouldn't have done that, but it looks all right. I, I'm gonna give up on that endeavor now though. I'll try to make this one look kind of similar just so it matches. Yeah, that's what I love about painting though. No right or wrong. We're having a little bit of fun with it. Um, I am trying to teach you all the fundamentals of painting and just kind of getting it started. I hope you're not trying to copy exactly what I'm doing. I mean, if you are, it's good. I'm glad you're painting, but I, for most people, it's really hard to make an exact replicated copy. I might have been redundant, but the point being is I hope you have your own butterflies and I hope you're having fun with it. And the end goal clearly here is to have a really bright center where all the energy is coming from. And then the farther and farther away it gets from the body, the more and more colors we're seeing. And now we have some illuminated butterflies. This one, <laughs> its head is driving me crazy. He's like a lot of neck. So I'm gonna fill in that part real quick and just give him a little bit less of a neck. A little on the fly adjustments, it, it definitely happens. Not everything turns out perfect. Bob Ross said it best, they're happy accidents. And oops, now I'm completely reshaping this butterfly and I please don't do that with your own. I, uh, I'm, oh, what we're, exactly what I had mentioned earlier. I'm overworking this one a little bit. It's not beyond repair by any means. It's still gonna look good, but 
I'm gonna rush through this now because I am overthinking it and I should just get this white put down pretty fast. And uh, this is a good point for me to stop because otherwise I'll just keep working, 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 working and it'll be a constant battle. So I'm gonna call it good enough and, and we'll call it good. We'll work on some, some dust trails are coming up next. They're gonna have a little pixie dust or fairy dust, whatever coming off of them, just to make it look kind of magical, fill in some of this other negative space that we have. And if you want, you can take some, again, some dark blue and kind of go and clean up these edges a little bit and see if you can mix it down. I'm just trying to perfect that gradient we were talking about. to paint this butterfly jar the same way we did the butterflies. I'm just gonna grab that brush and our highlights have already been made here with the chalk, so we don't have to think about that anymore. And we put down our white, those are gonna be the glowing edges of the jar. We need to just paint in kind of some of the harder surfaces here. I'm gonna paint the whole upper part of this jar, a mix of what we've been doing with the butterflies. So this phalo blue, maybe a little bit of turquoise, we just want it to be, look like it's actually got a solid shape. And since we put down these white edges, it'll be a little bit brighter naturally around the edges and kind of have a glassy look or shape to it. And I'm just going through, you're gonna notice if you cover up the edges, that's, that's good, it's fine. It's just gonna be brighter on those edges and that's exactly what we want. So some of these areas, maybe closer to the sides, will be a little bit darker. Up to you, you can play with that. And I'm gonna cover all of these white lines of the jar as well. So just taking some blue, you can mix the green if you want, but I'm gonna just start with some blue. Mix in a little bit of white with it. And you don't even have to be perfect going around these edges. The, the differences, this, one line on the jar shouldn't be one color. If you look in real life at the edge of a glass or a bottle or a jar yourself, you're gonna see that it's made up of several lines of different color and that's what kind of creates a reflection feel. So just do a two or one or two, three lines down the side of it and you can be a little bit messy with it and it'll actually make it naturally look like it's a piece of glass but I am only sticking with all these white parts we did. These would be the hard edges where there's something going on and the light's getting bent. Now in the middle of the bottom one, I'm gonna not clean off my brush. I'll leave some of this white, but I'm gonna grab a bunch of just phalo blue by itself. And I'm gonna create a small little gradient inside the bottom of the jar here as well. That's just gonna give us some more three dimensional character to it, some more depth. So we can see that the ground is not, or the, the bottom of the jar is on the ground and it's not see-through, so we can get some of this darker color. And then I'm just doing a few light grazes on the side as if there's a reflection coming off of this glass jar. So you can do just another line that kind of follows that curve a little bit and just pull some down. And now we look like we have a reflection of these lights coming off the jar. And while I have this brighter color, I'm gonna just go back and cover the, the edges of the jar here 
because I feel like those would be really bright in this situation. I'm using the same principles here as we did with the butterflies. Just create kind of a little gradient, make sure that the edges are bold, whether it's bold with light or bold with the darker color, just the edges should be bold. And then everything else should have a nice gradient with it. And I gotta get the bottom edges. And honestly, it's easy to overwork this aspect of it as well. Usually less is more. I'm kind of just trying to get rid of some of this chalk. Uh, you know, what? I'm going to make a line that goes down and to the left. So it looks like there was a screw top jar kind of on it. That's a little extra credit. You don't have to do that part. I bet a lot of people won't even notice, but you can kind of make it look like it was screwed on the jar top. Then I'll take some regular white and just come back and do little bold highlights, just little glimmers of light, just to help add more detail to the fact that this is a glass jar. And these are really fun to do, but it's really easy to overdo these details as well. So use the highlighting sparingly. See already, I feel like I've created a little too much. So I think I'm gonna slow down at this point. Don't mind the little touch-ups on the, the butterfly here. I didn't like his pattern, so we're just gonna cover up that gradient. Skip backwards a little bit. Yeah, it looks better to me. So, pr to <laughs> provided with whatever colors you're using or have on your brush, if you think that color is gonna help you, feel free to use it. That's what I did there. Now, while this paint is slowly running out of my brush, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna just make up some imaginary trails that these butterflies might have taken from leaving. Since they're glowing, maybe they have some kind of bioluminescent bio power, powder or something coming off, or there leaves a trail almost like you're doing some open frame or open shutter photography. <laughs> This one did a loop-de-loop. -loop. I'm gonna make it do a loop-de-loop, -loop. but it's just some of this blue and green that's left over on the brush, just to kind of show. And I'm letting the brush naturally run out of paint. There is not a lot of paint on this brush right now at all. And I'm very lightly pushing. I don't want too much paint to be down for this particular section. I want it to look like it's glowing dust. Um, see in there, I got a little too much white. So I gotta go back to the darker color. There we go. Now that creates that kind of wispy effect. I'm gonna get some white and just put some dots in here. You can change your paintbrush completely if you'd like to. I'm just gonna use the corner of my brush and we're just gonna add just some little, just dots, little dabs, just to make it look like it's magic dust, I guess, for lack of better phrase or word, but there we go. And I like to do different sizes. So obviously the harder I push on the brush, the bigger the dot's gonna be. If I'm gentle and barely touch it, you're gonna see a small dot. So mix and match what kind of dots are here just for some more variety. So I'm gonna put a lot at the base of the butterfly as if that's where it's all coming from. And as it gets farther and farther away from where it flew, maybe the dust isn't as strong. So as we go down this little loop-de-loop -loop trail, we're only gonna do just a couple dots. We're not gonna put a lot down there. Their flight trail is slowly going away. That's the way I see it. So lots of little dots by the body. Again, change the sizes by how hard you push down on your brush. And I'm gonna go up into the butterfly just a little bit too, just so we know there's no confusion that this is where that dust came from. 
And while you have the solid white, or excuse me, as now that you have the solid white, you can come through and add just a few more details if you miss something. Or if this the center of the butterfly now is probably a lot more dry, you can really, and you are mixing some of your other colors, it's one final layer of white that you can put down just to really, really drive home the point of this is glowing, it's really, really bright. to be relaxing and fun and if you're on your way to being the next Picasso or the next Michelangelo then hats off to you but really the goal of these paintings are to get something that you enjoy looking at that gave you time to relax chill enjoy and work on a craft or a skill that's enjoyable and if you were just watching then I hope it's been at least a relaxing video to watch And now I got just a tiny little detail brush and I'm making the antenna. Now the cool thing that you can do to make this work in your favor is mix a little bit of water into your white. Make it kind of thin so it's not clumpy at all. And if you mix that little bit of water in, that paint will come right off of your brush. You won't have to fight it. You're gonna get these nice, really clean lines. Put a little dot at the end of it then you won't have to make several little tiny lines and you're not gonna have to go over and redo them a bunch either. So mix in a little bit of water into that white paint, thin it out, make sure your brush is loaded up with that white paint and it's not clumpy. It should almost feel like ink. As you spread that onto the, the canvas, it should come off real easy. And I'm gonna go back and do the edges of this jar with this too, since I have this nice thin white. And I'm gonna make long, smooth, single lines. I'm not gonna come back here and go dash, 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 or do a whole bunch of strokes to try to do one angle. I'm gonna do my best to get one smooth line. That's the technique that you definitely want here. So mix a, some water into that paint. Come back and do some details on your edges. And once you're done with your details and stuff, we'll go, oh, let's add some uh, little grass blades. Now that I have this nice, really thin white and this little brush, I'm gonna make a few individual blades of grass. And I'm gonna pretend like this jar is like, I'm out there in real life in a grass field and I just set this jar down. Some of this grass will separate and pull against the glass. And since these butterflies are lighting everything up, we would definitely see it. But as it gets farther and farther, further away from uh, the glass jar, we're not gonna see the grass as much. So it's gonna get darker and darker and darker. And these little blades that light up, we're gonna go over it with green anyway. But just like the principle of what we've been doing so far is once we do go over at that green, this is really gonna pop, it's gonna shine once we add this color. So there we go, I just grabbed some phthalo green and it's not mixed with anything, it's just the green. But as you can see, as I'm doing sh short brush strokes, I'll go around, if I go around the edges, wherever it's not white, you can still see it, but barely, it's barely there. And as soon as I cover up that white, it pops out more, it mixes with that white, we get to see more of it. I'm doing a small little hue behind the, the the glass jar here, so obviously it's a two-dimensional painting. I'm just right next to the butterfly, but if you get just a little bit of that dark green back there in the back of the jar, it'll add to that see-through effect. Now I'm not gonna cover this whole area with green paint, and I'm gonna kinda just do an oval 
or a circle around the jar. And as I do this, I'm doing like a lot of short, short bust strokes as if this is like how the grass is growing out. I'm doing the same, same motion as if the grass was growing in fast time. I'm not going horizontal or long strokes or anything like that. I'm mimicking what the paintbrush would do in real life if it was actually creating grass. So it would grow horizontally, it would kind of, I'm sorry, it would grow vertically and lean horizontally a little bit. And I just want to get some of this color in here. It is mixing with the white I already laid down, which is good, this is what we want. We should now have kind of a 3D area um, starting to pop out in front of us. Now it's okay to paint in that part of the jar, just make sure you don't cover up the butterfly or go over any of your, your glowing lines. You wanna keep that 3D glassy effect going on. So as I go ahead with regular green, you can see it's maybe not as bright because it's getting further away from the, the jar. And as we do that, it gets darker and darker and darker. In this particular painting, I think these butterflies are our only light source. So we gotta, Think about that when we're laying down these colors. Okay, so now I mixed a little bit of white into this green. Uh, I even have some yellow. I mixed a little bit of yellow in here as well just to kind of give us some different shades of green. And I'm going back, back and forth between the dark green, the yellowish green, and the, the really light green. I'm gonna go back and highlight and just, I'm gonna make individual blades of grass. And since this is a brighter color, I don't wanna to get too far away from the jar. It wouldn't make sense for there to be a huge puff of grass somewhere out there way back in the back of the field. But it would make sense the closer these butterflies it is. So I'm just adding a few more tufts of, of grass, going over these already painted white pieces that I've already done. And you're gonna see just where those white pieces are, it already stands out really nice. Again, all my brush strokes should, are, I'm trying to mimic what grass would do in real life. I'm not doing a lot of horizontal strokes. I'm not doing a lot of long strokes. I'm trying to keep this simple as if grass is doing what it's doing, you know? And then as the closer we get to the jar, the brighter these blades of grass will become. does look a little fuzzy. No, there's nothing wrong with the camera or anything. I am purposely making it a little hazy. I'm kind of scratching in some of these colors, but that's because once we come in with these final details and these really, really bright blades of grass, they're gonna pop out the most. And it kind of creates just a really nice effect. having that fuzzy kind of background and then mixed with some of these other areas where we do more details. So this I'm being more deliberate about how I make this grass grow since I've added some more white and yellow into this particular batch of paint I'm using. But the brighter it gets, the less we should use or at least the closer to the jar it should be. But this is one of those things too that it can get carried away with really easily. So the brighter it is, use a little bit more sparingly. And if it's the really dark color, you can use a bunch of it. We're just kind of mimicking real life here of how light would work. Just a few blades of grass, that's it. Just a few with this really bright color and then move on to the next section. Fill just a few braids and move on to the next section. There, inside of the glass, or at least through it on the other side of the glass, it'd still be bright. So I'm doing a couple behind or next to the butterfly just so it looks like it's back there in the distance on the other side of the grass.
and then you can grab that detail brush, like I said, go back with some of these really bright greens that you've made. Um, and, and do a few and mix some water into it, just like with our other detail thing we did. Mix a little bit of water into that really bright green and create just a few more brush strokes of this really bright green. Just so it looks like a little individual blade of grass. And, and do as many or as few as you'd like. You can even come back and use a darker color and create some shadows against some of these lighter pieces of grass. It's really up to you, but as long as you get the, the method of the brighter it is, closer to the jar, then anything you do should look really cool, and I, and I hope it does. Just a few bright little pieces of strands of glass and, or glass, excuse me, of grass. <laughs> and now it looks like this thing's actually sitting on the ground in a big field of grass and these butterflies have some kind of bioluminescence superpowers and they're going back to the wild. But now I feel relaxed, I feel pretty good and doing the details is my favorite part. Hey, tell me what your favorite part is in the comments below. If you painted along with me, I'd love to uh, hear about your process. So let me know. I'm just trying to add a few extra blades of grass over here since we kind of just smudged some dark paint over there. I want it to look like at least there's some grass growing out there in the dark and we just can't really see it. So I'm gonna add just a few brush strokes to make that continuity work. Add a few shadows and I mean, this looks like it's done. Awesome. Man, that is some good looking grass. I create and teach these paintings because I really love working with luminescence and light sources. It's just my favorite thing to do. But put in the comments below what your favorite thing to paint is or what you loved or enjoyed about this painting. Just don't forget though to like, subscribe, comment, just let us know you're out there. Whether you painted along with me here today or just tuned in to hear me talk, I wanna thank you for checking out the Esto James channel and we'll see you next time.